another day at the Crucible is finished and it is genuinely my privilege to get a bit of a backstage tour with the one and only Jimmy White. Now when it comes to a tour, we've done one before which was by me, but now I get to hear the stories from the great man himself. You know, coming through this stage door in this iconic venue, it's such, such a, a great feeling for any snooker player. As a young lad, when I first come here, you know, to be able to come to the Crucible Theatre and be a part of it Thank was you. absolutely amazing. And we're going to go through, we show the dressing rooms first. Yes. Radzi. Do you still get excited when you come in here, Jim? I still get excited, yeah, I still get excited. I will be playing here next year. So this is dressing room four, I think they're all the same, but this one's open. This is quite a fairly big dressing room for what we normally have in most of the venues. Can oh. I mention here, Jim? So we've obviously got mugs of tea here. Yeah. We've got some fruit. Yeah. If we were here 30 years ago... What the, <laughs> the, these are the players of today. Unfortunately, in my day, it was, uh, it was cigarettes and halves of lager because even though, I mean, I'm actually joke about this, it's probably one of my downfalls, but in the interval, for example, I'd have a half a lager in my dressing room, then I'd go to the, to the lounge, I'd have another half a lager, then I'd have another half a lager in the press room, and then I'd go back on stage. So my 20 minutes where I should have been talking to my coach and my people getting me pumped up, I just used to, that was my way of releasing a bit of steam, but the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the Champions Lounge, Radzi. Champions Lounge, so in theory, this is just for the, either players and family and friends? Yes, family and friends Thank you. And, um, and guests of players, like friends, as you said, but um, you do get the odd referee come up here and sort of have a cup of coffee, but we don't have any journalists in here, which is great. <laughs> Now, right. somebody once referred to the journalists here as lizards. I couldn't possibly say who would do that, but it, obviously, present company accepted. We used to call them the reptile room. <laughs> but they're all right, you know. They're doing their job. So you come through here, we right. have... Uh, hey, guys. We have um, friends of Mark Selby his personal tailor and his pal. And this is the championship lounge where you can have champagne. Oh no, you can't, sorry. You, can you used to, last year you could. Tea and coffee, yeah, we used to, every, there used to be five or six bars in um, places throughout the Crucible. Now it's just all tea and coffee, bananas and uh, soft drinks. So Jimmy, if we're sort of 30 years ago and you walk through the door, what are you requesting? Is it, is it ale? Is it vodka? Is it? Well, for me, I just used to like half the lager and whoever was behind the bar, as soon as I'd come in, they'd pour me one. So, not the right way to go. <laughs> There's a theme here. There is a theme, but we're getting the real backstage. Will my see you tomorrow? Yeah. Cool. See you later. You. Cheers, guys. Right, we're going to go down to the practice room now. Yes. Which is, this is where everybody gets built up for before your match and in between games you come here and practice. Bonnie O'Sullivan is here sometimes half seven, eight o'clock in the morning, nobody knows that, Get, getting tuned up. I have to also say, if you're in the Champs Lounge when play is happening, it's tense in there and you also get sometimes four lots of friends and family all backing different people. And if my mum were in there and she were backing me, needless to say, it'd be pretty tense. <laughs> so just over on our left hand side here that's where the actual play happens if matches were happening now we'd have to hush our tones thankfully it's all closed and that's why we're able to do this and, and here we have our producer the man who tells me off on a daily basis in my ear but because Jim gets everything right first time it's yeah. just me that gets in trouble Ratty carries me all day <laughs> This here. Oh, here we go. This is our practice area. So this is now the BBC. The actual professionals. We're like the cowboys, they're the professionals. We've got Rishi over there getting ready. All he ever does all day is prep, prep, prep. Never goes to the gym, never goes to the spa, not at all. He's got his eye on the prize. I assure you. And we've got 
Are you they sure can, yeah. you, there are no professionals in here? <laughs> <laughs> and that's include Rishi. Yeah. <laughs> all the snooker all, uh, all, <laughs> all the professionals have left the building. <laughs> this is where it all happens, where everyone Sorry. works Sorry. on their Sorry. technique, Sorry. gets ready for their matches, and uh, most of the practice is done before they get here, but if they've had a, a match where they've struggled with safety or positional play, potting, they come and put it right here whenever they can. Jim, if it is one of the biggest matches of your lives, how are you actually feeling when you come to the table for the last time before going out there? Well, you, you just want to make sure you pot easy balls, just get your cueing arm going, get your eyes focused and get ready for the game. You, if your practice is not done before you turn up at the Crucible, you're not going to get very far. And again, if we go back to, I don't know, 1990, how much practice were you doing the hour before the match? Well, Ken Doherty's just laughing in the background there. About <laughs> <have> two minutes. <laughs> he never went out till he was 40. <laughs> He's making up for it now. You want to hear him sing? <laughs> now, you, you know, the, most players, um, you hear, like Ronnie O'Sullivan, he's coming in here in the morning, sometimes half seven till nine o'clock, nobody even knows he's here. So the winners put in the work, that's for sure. And we're currently possibly looking at the seniors final here. So the seniors will be happening, and could the final be Ken Doherty over there, currently doing the lineup, no pressure on this black Ken, none at all. <laughs> we're in different Jimmy halves, White. aren't we? Huh? We're in different halves. <laughs> <laughs> they had a final before, and it was a brilliant match, actually, as we said, Jimmy came, came back from the brink to level it and then to... <laughs> he, he nearly got over that. Just through these doors here, it might look like nothing, but this is where our studio is. This is where the magic happens. Absolutely. It's a bit like an art classroom that you might have had in year nine meets a DIY lab. There's a lot going on here, but the guys have made some serious magic. Now, we don't even know where the lights are. We're going to try and find the lights. Now, Jim, I know it's somewhere around here. Thankfully, Ollie knows what. Listen, he's a cameraman and he's a light assist as well. And this, you might recognise, is our studio here. So what usually happens is we sit down. We've got no idea what's going on. All we know it's going to be some brilliant snooker. And then we get our hands rubbed together because it's going to be an incredible 17 days of action. Make sure you watch the final. Whatever you do, it's going to be fantastic. Once again, the crew's will delivering the goods. And Jimmy, if we were to call it right here, right now. Who's going to be the 2023 champ? Ronnie O'Sullivan. Who would have guessed it? Hi, I'm Ronnie O'Sullivan and welcome to Eurosport Snooker on YouTube. Click here to subscribe to Eurosport Snooker.